Hello and welcome to Aten Math. In this edition of Aten Math, we're going to talk about some general problems involved in basic trigonometry with right angles. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the six trig functions of the angle theta. And we're given the values 4 and 6, one for the side that's opposite theta and one for the hypotenuse. So the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out what the value is for the side uh, that's going to be the adjacent side to the angle in question. And we can do that by using the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that <coughs> x squared plus 16 or 4 squared is equal to 36. So I see now that x squared is going to be equal to 20. Uh, and then x is equal to the square root of 20. Now I can simplify that further by saying that x is equal to 2 root 5. So now I see that x is 2 root 5. I can go through the process of evaluating these trig functions. And I'll start with sine. So sine is the relationship of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So sine is going to be 4 over 6 or 2 thirds. Cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine, so it's just 3 over 2. Cosine is going to be the adjacent side, or 2 root 5 over 6, which reduces to root 5 over 3. And secant is the reciprocal of that, 3 root 5. Now, in the interest of time, we're not going to rationalize the denominator, uh, but you should, as part of the process of expressing this problem, fully rationalize the denominator. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, which is 4 over 2 root 5. And cotangent is just a reciprocal of that, 2 root 5 over 4. The next question, we're asked to find um, the five remaining trig function given that tangent of theta is 5 over 8. So in this case, now we need to find the hypotenuse. So again, we use the uh, Pythagorean theorem. So to figure out the hypotenuse, so 5 squared, which is 25, plus 64 is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And the hypotenuse squared is going to be equal to 89. So I can say that the hypotenuse is going to be now the square root of 89. So I'm going to write that in here, square root of 89. And I'm just going to leave this as the square root of 89. So the cotangent, of course, is just going to be the reciprocal of tangent 8 over 5. The sine of theta is going to be 5 uh, over the square root of 89. Cosecant is the reciprocal square root of 89 over 5. Cosine is going to be the adjacent side, or 8, over the hypotenuse square root of 89. And the secant is the reciprocal of that square root of 89 over 5. In the next problem, we're asked to find the exact values of x and y. And now we're set up with our special family of right triangles, the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we know in this case, for our 30, 60, 90 triangle, so in our 30, 60, 90 triangle, we know the side opposite the 30 degree angle is going to be x. The side opposite the 90 degree angle is going to be 2 times that value. And the side that's opposite 60 is going to be x root 3. So simply by looking at this, we can see that the x value is going to be equal to 3, and the y value is going to be equal to 6. OK, our final problem is to, or potentially second to last problem, is to find um, and to solve the triangle ABC, which I've done but am now erasing, um, given that uh, the angle A is 48 degrees and the side A is a length of 8. So let's just write an 8 here for A. And now what we want to do is we want to find B and C. So let's find first, let's find C. And we know that C is the hypotenuse. A is the side that's opposite, right? The side opposite the angle of 48. So we know that the sine of 48 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, or 8, over C. Or we can rewrite this as c is equal to 8 over the sine of 48 degrees. So if we use our calculators, 
we type in 8, and then we divide that by the sine of 48 degrees. We come up with a value of approximately 10.8 units. So now I have C as 10.8 units. I can either use a Pythagorean theorem or I can use uh, cosine to find out what the value of B is. Let's do cosine just because we're using trigonometry. Now the cosine of 48 degrees now is going to be equal to, or I could also use tangent as well, is going to be equal to the adjacent side, which is B, over 10.8. Or I can say that B is equal to 10.8 times the cosine of 48 degrees. So I type in 10 and I multiply it by the cosine of 48 degrees and I have a value of approximately 6.7. Now I can figure out my angle B simply by understanding that the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. I have 90 here, 48. I'm left with a value of 42. So I've solved all of the open or remaining values that are required to define this particular triangle. In the last problem, we're going to use angle of elevation and depression in order to figure out what the uh, height of a flagpole is. So let's just say that we're trying to figure out what x is. Here I have an angle of 30 degrees, and I want to find out what x is. I know that 26 feet <coughs> is my measurement. Well, I know that 26 feet is going to be x root 3 because the side, uh, this, this angle here is going to be 60. My relationships between my 30, 60, and now 90 triangles are x, x root 3, and 2x. So I can simply find out what x is, or the height of the flagpole, by saying x root 3 is equal to 26, or x is equal to 26 over root 3. Now I'm going to have to use my calculator to figure this, figure this out. And I can also use trigonometry to figure this out as well. Uh, so I get a, a value of 26 divided by the square root of 3, which is approximately 15 feet. Now the other way to do this is again to use trigonometry, um, which is basically the same thing as understanding our 30, 60, 90 relationships. I know that the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to x over the adjacent side, which is 26, or x is equal to 26 times the tangent of 30 degrees. So if you type in 26 times the tangent of 30 degrees, you should come out with the same value of approximately 15 feet.